This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You're watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. All right, it's that time again. Q&A for the channel members. Now, again, if you are not a channel member and you wish to become one, link in the description box you can, or, or just right next to the subscribe button you should see the join button give that a click of course um you can have like a little read of everything that you get before you uh, join and that of course and this is one of the many perks that these guys get along with the uh the names at the beginning of every single video plus many many other things um extra discounts for merchandise and all kinds of other stuff uh, interviews before anybody else gets to see them all that kind of stuff so Go give it um, a little read and see what you think. So we're going to get into the Q&A. Again, just because you're a channel member, um, if you don't want to take part in the, the Q&A, you don't have to. Many people just do it just to, just to support, which is fine. And again, the option is there if you want to do it. So not everybody has chosen to do this one, uh, but there are a few. So we'll get cracking on it. G-Man, big up. Do you think Usyk will be able to cope with Chizora's size if and when they fight? Well, apparently that fight will be announced at some point this week, officially. So that would be great. Um, Usyk, he's used to fighting big guys from his amateur days. So he knows how to handle the likes of Chisora. But um, Chisora, he fights like a bull in a china shop, doesn't he? But again, Chisora ain't great with southpaws. Ain't great with southpaws. And I know that uh, there's a little bit of worry in camp right before he fought Spilka. Because apparently he just wasn't getting on very well with the sparring with southpaws. But luckily enough, he managed to... Um, put everything together on fight night and just get you um, spilk it out of there real quick which of course he was always going to do anyway but with Usyk being southpaw it's going to be difficult Usyk is um, a little bit smaller not ma not massively smaller by the way but faster very very fast hands very good on his feet so Chizora he's going to be the predator in this one he's going to be the one chasing Chizora no, so, sorry, chasing Usyk. U Usyk is just going to jab him, jab his body, and just have some fun with Chizora. But if Chizora gets him trapped, there's a very good chance that uh, Usyk could be in a whole world of trouble. Don't get me wrong, I think Usyk, he carries some pretty decent power, but not devastating power, but he could hurt Chizora enough to uh, make Chizora think twice about engaging, and he could legitimately stop Chizora. And we've seen that when Chizora has to chase people around, he does get tired, and... Well, at one time, he actually quit because of it with uh, Tarzan Fury in the rematch. So, Chizora, he's used to being down on the cards. And with his new form lately, obviously with uh, David Hay and that being there, don't be surprised if he pulls out an upset. And as, of course, a Brit, as much as I do support Usyk, but um, uh, Chizora, he is a Brit, so, of course, I will be um, hoping that uh, Chizora gets the win. But as far as size goes, no, I think that... Uh, Usyk will just use his speed to stay away from him. Francis Carroll, big up to you. Now Fury has a WBC strap with a third fight likely. Where does it leave White? Is this Povetkin fight another eliminator? Fury even said White deserves his shot. Uh, White definitely deserves his shot. He's been he's been properly buggered by WBC, for sure. Um, his position is he'll get a title shot no later than February 2021. If not... The title will then be taken and given to Dillian White. As WBC Interim World Heavyweight Champion, he will, he will just be given the uh, belt if that mandatory position isn't fulfilled. Again, so for example, with Tyson Fury, he's going to be taking on Deontay Wilder in say, uh, late July. If Tyson Fury can't fulfill that because he gets injured or whatever it may be, Dillian White can step in as champion and fight in Tyson Fury's place. That's the benefit of being interim world heavyweight champion. But as far as um, where does it leave him? Just keep busy, really, um, and until he actually gets that title shot, because because we know he's gonna get his world title shot, providing he doesn't lose between now and then. But Dillian, like Dillian, he would just take risk after risk, and this Povetkin fight is no given. It really isn't. I know a lot of people are writing off Povetkin, but people who um, they've been writing off Povetkin for like the last year or so, and he keeps on pulling out these wins and that as well. So there's no giving in this one, that is for sure. But the Povetkin final eliminator, every fight that Dillian has now is a final eliminator. So he loses, God forbid it doesn't happen, touch wood, then that person will then replace him in that position as interim champion, mandatory challenger. But at the same time, hopefully, hopefully Eddie Hearn has done the wise thing. As much as we all believe that Dean White will be Povetkin, you never know. Make sure that there's a rematch clause in there. All right? That's the, that's the most important thing. Make sure there is a rematch clause in that contract.
just in case. Heavyweight boxing, you never know. But in my opinion, I think Dinian White will smoke him. Rico, see that? Big up to you, my friend. When Dillian going to be on the channel again and we need that Eddie Hearn interview sporting? Well, with Eddie Hearn, he's one of these guys, he's very, very arrogant. Um, when you see him face to face, he's very, very nice. And um, um, I have a lot of respect for Eddie Hearn. Um, and, and I've spoken with him many times. But getting him on the channel, unless I actually confront him, it's quite difficult. Um, he will quite happily do um, interviews with IFL, of course. And of course, other people have priority. See, I don't get priority because I don't go to all the shows. Many of you guys know the reason why I can't go to many of the shows um, due to my disabled son and that. So it's very difficult for me to get up and down the country to go to the shows. And therefore, Eddie Hearn, he doesn't um, really see me as somebody who is here for the long term. I suppose that's probably the best way to put it. But with IFL, with Sky, with DAZN, of course, with his own channel, Matchroom Boxing, of course, these will get the priority. So getting Eddie Hearn on, listen, I could have got Eddie Hearn on quite a few times, but I thought, ah, you know what, I ain't going to bother. If he ain't going to make the effort for me, I ain't going to make the effort for him. Um, because all it is is that I will always prioritise those who want to be on the channel, not chase people. That's how, how I've always been. I know Eddie Hearn will always happily give me an interview. Of course he will. And, um, you know, he has done it on uh, quite a few occasions. But again, I've had to go up to him. He doesn't have five or ten minutes in the day to do a podcast. And if he does, he's going to give it to Sky, isn't he? He's going to give it to DAZN or IFL or whoever else it may be. But anyway, with uh, Dillian, um, I spoke with him quite a few times, um, obviously off the channel. And um, obviously he's been on the channel several times as well. And uh, Dillian, he's always up for coming on the channel. Uh, but we are in a period now where it's quite difficult to try and find time when he's free and time when I'm free as well. Because I don't have a lot of time, time like, a, like a during the day or evenings and that as well. Because obviously I've got a family and everything as well. Dillian, he's in camp right now. And while he's going back and forward to the gym a couple of times a day, maybe in three times a day or different gyms for cardio and other ones for boxing purposes and what have you, the period in between, he needs to be resting. You know, going home, having a sleep, having a bath, walking the dogs, spending some time with his kids, doing whatever else, else um, it is that he's doing. Of course, Dillian, he said to me, like a like many a times, of course, he'll come on the channel. Of course, he will. And, uh, you know, he's always up for doing it. But again, it is finding the right time. But yes, Dillian, he will be coming on the channel real, real soon. So will Mark Tibbs. So will quite a few others as well. So stay tuned for all that. The Boxing Icons, big up. When are you going to get Tyson Fury on? That will, that, that will be good. Also, do you, who do you think will win between AJ and Fury? If you'd asked me that question a year ago, which many people did, I always said AJ by knockout or Fury on points. That's me and the general consensus for most people. But now we've seen for their last fights that Joshua can adapt. He can change his style totally. And with Fury over Wilder, he can change his totally. So now it's very difficult to pick a winner. It really is for me. Fury, he can now potentially knock out Anthony Joshua. And now Anthony Joshua can potentially beat Tyson Fury on points. So it's very, very difficult for me to pick a winner on this one. Um, I wouldn't feel comfortable betting money that or, or risky kind of money on either one of them. Right now, for me, it's a 50-50 fight um, in, all, um, in all honesty. As far as getting Tyson Fury on... Um, um, I had a couple of occasions before when I possibly could have done. But with Tyson Fury, he's one of these guys now, which is the right way to be, by the way. When he's in camp, he wants to concentrate on his boxing and prepare for his fight, as in no media or that kind of thing. Of course, certain people, they do get access because they've put in the work beforehand. Obviously, they were here way before I was. I mean, who the hell am I, right? But when he's not in camp... He wants to be spending it with his family. He wants people to leave him alone. And that's exactly how it should be. So again, I'm not going to really disturb him. And the off time that he gets, if he does do Q&As and interviews, it'll be ones where he's getting paid, okay, with Gold Star Promotions, with, with Michelle Joy Phelps doing the interviewing and all that kind of stuff. But I had opportunities before, but his team, not MTK, but another team wanted paying. And I don't care who you are, I ain't paying for nobody. It's as simple as that. Listen, Fury... He's probably totally unaware of this, but they wanted a hell of a lot of money. And I don't care how much money it is, 50p. I ain't doing it, all right? I ain't doing it. I'm not going to pay anybody to come on my channel. People will come on my channel if they want to, not because I'm paying them. And that's how it is. I don't care if it's Tyson Fury. 
I don't care if it's Anthony Joshua, I don't care if it's Canelo Alvarez, I don't care who it is. I ain't paying for nobody to come on this channel. Simple as that. You know, I'm giving up my time as well. So, no. Uh, but again, with Anthony Joshua, um, I've been promised interviews with Anthony Joshua quite a few times. But lately, um, it's a case of they go quiet now. Now they don't say anything. They don't, re they don't even respond. And when they do respond, it's a case of, oh, well, Joshua's busy and Joshua's doing this and we'll sort it all out. And then it will flip to the next time. Well, we have to prioritize the zone and Sky Sports, which is fair enough. But it's weird. You see, I don't get any kind of, um, I'm even closer to them. I feel like I've been fudged and lied about, to be honest with you. So now I don't even bother right now. But anyway, who knows? Maybe one day, right? Maybe. Atomic Spurs fan, big up to you. Do you think Wilder's fanboys are the worst fans in, in the history of boxing? Absolutely. Um, apart from BG London, he's all right, but the rest of them. <laughs> big up BG London. Um, also presuming Fury beats Wilder again. If Dini puts on another great show and stops Povetkin with a great performance, do you think Fury will want to give him the shot for the WBC strap before he goes for Undisputed? Um, no, I think that um, doesn't really matter what happens with Dillian right now. Um, if he beats Povetkin, obviously that's great. Of course, he's just maintained his position. But um, due to him being mandated for February, then if the option is there to fight Joshua beforehand, obviously, again, if uh, Fury beats Wilder, then they're looking to do the undisputed fight for November or December time. That's what I think would be. If they can't get that fight over the line, then yes, I would fully expect Tyson Fury to um, fight Dillian White. Honestly, I would. But of course, with the undisputed fight, it will be for all the belts. With Fury and Joshua having the automatic rematch, that won't be for undisputed. The rematch won't be for undisputed. I think the WBC and the WBO will be stripped from the winner. And Usyk will then go have to fight, say, Parker for, for the vacant belt. Dillian White, he will be given automatically the belt because he's interim world champion. Much like um, Dillian, and I've said it before, if, if Tyson Fury can't make the Wilder fight for whatever reason may be, injury or whatever, Dillian can step in to replace Tyson Fury as champion and he could end up fighting Wilder. So Dillian, he's in a very good position, but of course he's risking it like he always does. He's an absolute warrior, really is. And what does it say? Oh yeah, um, you feel sorry for Dillian. He's not getting his deserved chance soon enough. I totally agree. He's been totally screwed up by the WBC. P Boxing, big up. What's happening with Dillian White WBC mandatory position? Exactly as I said, said just there, which is February 2021 20, will be the deadline that he gets his world title shot or be given the belt. He has to get a world title shot or be given the belt by that point. So um, he's still mandatory and it's, it's just a case of being busy between now and then. He could go fight a few stiffs, but he ain't gonna, you know what he's like. He will, he will take on the tough guys. And Povetkin ain't no mug. That's for sure. It's a very, very dangerous fight for Dillian. Again, don't forget Dillian didn't have too much amateur experience and hasn't had a lot of pro fights. So he's actually still learning. All right, so um, I think that, um, I think that he will be given the belt. I don't think he'll end up fighting Fury for it. Honestly, I think that uh, that uh, the belt will be taken from Fury or Joshua, um, um, whoever wins the Undisputed. If not, I mean, if the Undisputed doesn't happen, then I would fully expect Dillian to get his title shot against Fury um, late in the year. But anyway, I have to wait and see. It's boxing. So many ifs, buts and maybes and changes and all that kind of stuff. Scarcy I and I, big up to you. Do you agree lesbians and deaf women wear the same clothing styles? I've never thought about it, to be honest with you. I have no idea. Jane Fonda. Yep, she was nice back in the day. Uh, Makhmadov is looking promising, knocking out all of his 10 opponents, including seven in the first round, and has only been taken beyond the third round on one occasion. At six foot six and 260 pounds, can he be champ one day? Very early to say. I mean, at the minute, he's looking real good, but... He ain't looking no better than, say, Daniel Dubois or F.A. Jagba, although Jagba has been dropped. Um, but, I don't know, it's difficult. It's, it's, and again, not against the best of opposition. I think that he really needs to step it up a little bit and then we'll really see what it is that, that he's made of. Well, didn't he offer Wilder? Was it uh, 20 million and Wilder turned it down? Something like that. Either way, he's very confident in himself and who knows, he could go on to be the real deal. I'd be interested to see him take on, say, a Filip Herkovich or something like that. 
Let's see what see what both these cars are made of. Nick Harmer, big up. Icons, what's your thoughts on Israel Madrimov? Looking like a future star at Super Welter. Um, I think he would give some of the top boys in the division a tough time right now. Not that there's any super elite in that division at the moment. Bless up. Bless up to you, Nick. Yeah, maybe. I think that um, the, the Super Welterweight division is, yeah. Yeah, um, um, it ain't the deepest division in the world as far as superstars are concerned but of course you do have some of the champions obviously like a jamal charlo and what have you there are some decent fights out there for him if jarrett hurd stays there maybe a fight with kel brook maybe a why not a fight right now with well i think maybe right now maybe um in, in, in a couple of fights time with say a tate cheeseman or a anthony fowler or a scott fitzgerald or something like that and then we'll really see what he's made of maybe depending on how it goes with josh kelly Maybe Josh Kelly can move up and uh, and uh, take him on. But I think there's lots of options right now. I think um, as far as fighting with the big boys, of course, you're talking about um, the uh, the Jamal Charlos and and what have you. And I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, all of the champions so far have looked a little suspect at times. So potentially, I wouldn't be at all surprised if he did end up fighting one of them and uh, gets to win. Yeah, why not? Looking pretty good so far, though. Roy P, big up. Sporting, would like to know your prediction for Povetkin versus White. I think it's a very tough fight and quite similar in aggressiveness. What's your opinion on Joshua getting the unification shot before White as a mandatory? Do you think Fury will delay the unification if he wins? All the best, power and thanks. Um, yeah, so Roy, I think that my predict my prediction for Dillian White and Alexander Povetkin, I think it's going to be a very, very tough, tough fight in this one. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if both these guys end up hitting the canvas. Uh, but I think that Dillian White will catch him a bit later on or beat him on points. Real world, tough fight to call. But of course, I want Dillian White to win and I believe in Dillian White. I think Dillian White on his day can beat anybody. So, But Povetkin is a real legitimate potential banana skin. That is for sure. Um, what's your opinion on Joshua getting the unification shot before White as mandatory? Well... It's the fight that uh, the public want, isn't it? I mean, um, in fairness, if we were to look at it from fairness, Dillian White should fight Fury first and then the winner of White and Fury go fight Joshua for Undisputed. That would be the fair thing to do, but we don't live in a fair world. People want to see Undisputed. Many people haven't seen Undisputed in their lifetime. Or if they were around, they don't, they don't really remember it. So, of course, they won it. And now there's a chance of two Brits with Fury and Joshua. That's going to be the priority, isn't it? But as I said, I mean, for me, as a massive Dillian White fan, I'd, I, I would love to see him go fight Tyson Fury for the strap. That's the belt that he's always wanted. It's a WBC. Then he's always wanted to go rematch Joshua for Undisputed. So why not give him the chance? And I'm sure that the fight fans wouldn't complain too much seeing Tyson Fury versus Dillian White. That's a blockbuster fight, isn't it? Not? And do you think Fury will delay the, the unification if he wins again? Um... So if he beats Wilder, will he delay the unification? Um, I think the only people who will delay the unification will be somewhere between Eddie Hearn, Bob Arum and Frank Warren. And I think Frank Warren might be the culprit in all this one. I mean, already he's saying that people should put all egos to the side and get this fight done. It should be 50-50 down the middle. He's saying put egos to the side and then comes out in the same breath as it should be Fury versus Joshua, not Joshua versus Fury. That's not putting your ego to the side. So already I'm starting to sense problems, but we'll have to wait and see though. We'll really have to wait and see. Uh, Toby, big up. Toby plays. Um, what do you think about Art Arthur versus Yard? Lyndon Arthur. I think Lyndon Arthur could legitimately beat Anthony Yard. Honestly. But we know why this fight is happening. Um, obviously Anthony Yard, um, he lost for the world title um, against Kovalev. He fought an absolute trash bag over there in Spain afterwards. Reason being, because that title has now been vacated. The WBO light -like heavyweight title has been vacated. And nobody who lost their last fight can fight for that belt. So he took that fight in Spain to ensure that he's got a win. And now he's going to be taking on Lyndon Arthur. This could be a banana skin for um, Anthony Yard. Legitimately could be. Listen, I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, Anthony Yard wins. Not at all. But... It's going to be a real, real tough fight. In fact, that, that could be the fight of the night, which is, of course, on the Dubois-Joyce undercard. Good question. And finally, Smitty Sports. Big up to you. If AJ beats Fury in a unification, do you now fancy White to beat AJ? Sorry, dude. Wanted to make it particularly uncomfortable for you. Yeah, you did. Um, 
It's so if Anthony Joshua beats Fury and becomes undisputed. Um, I think in reality, I mean, um, as I said before, I think uh, there'll be an automatic rematch anyway. So Fury will then activate the rematch. Likewise, if uh, Fury beats Joshua, Joshua will activate the rematch. So I wouldn't think that we're going to see Dillian versus either of those guys if they're prioritizing the undisputed fight. But if, for example, as you say there, Joshua beats Fury and Fury does not activate the rematch, then Joshua will have to defend the undisputed belt against his uh, mandatories. Again, unfortunately, damn stupid rules of boxing, the WBO was ordered before the WBC. So Joshua would then have to fight Usyk. Then he would have to fight Timmy White after. Um, so it's a real, real sticky one. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible situation, this one. But, okay, let's just go with it then. So uh, uh, Joshua beats Fury. And if Joshua then fights Dillian White, who wins? That's a real tough one. Um, I will probably favour Dillian White right now. I think, I think we've seen quite a few vulnerabilities of AJ. But AJ has managed to adjust his style, you know. And if you can adjust your style, he's very difficult to beat. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see Joshua going forward like Klitschko-esque, where he keeps a lot of opponents at the end of the jab and at some point in the fight, catch him with a straight right down the pipe. So it's, it's going to be very difficult. But yeah, I mean, I would favour Dillian to be anybody right now, to be honest with you. But again, with the likes of uh, Dillian, with Joshua, with uh, Fury and that, these guys can legitimately beat each other. Can they not? Nobody would ever bet their car or their house on a particular result, would they, um, with any of those three? So, yeah. yeah I think that's a Dillian. Um, I'll probably fancy Dillian right now to beat um, Anthony Joshua. Right now. But again, we'll have to wait and see how Dillian looks against Povetkin. We'll have to wait and see how Joshua looks against Pulev. But anyway, thank you very much for your questions, everybody. Again, if, if you're not a channel member and you want to become one, link in the description box. Drop your thoughts below, click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.